When I look back on that time period where I was on a lot of medications, I actually had so many that my medicine cabinet was just a bunch of yellow bottles. I would take, you know, between 15 and 20 Norco pills a day. You'd be surprised, you know, you build up a tolerance to it and then it doesn't take long. The opioid epidemic is a huge problem and people are eager for any alternative ways to try to ease the problem. Research in general has shown that cannabis is effective for treating pain, but what we don't know is how to really use it effectively. What we're trying to understand is if a person takes 10 milligrams of THC or a person takes 10 milligrams of CBD, how is that going to affect their symptom of pain? CBD is short for cannabidiol, and it's a compound found in cannabis plants, which includes both hemp and marijuana. And unlike THC, which is another well-known compound found in cannabis, CBD won't get you high. We know for sure that when people take opioids over time, they need to take more in order to get the same effect. And we also know that they have withdrawal if they don't have opioids on board. So those are two physiologic aspects to opioid dependence that we don't have with cannabis. So the tolerance and the withdrawal. So the opioids occupy specific receptors, which are called opioid receptors, and THC and CBD occupy endocannabinoid receptors. Now the real question is whether if you occupy the endocannabinoid receptors, um, do you get enough pain relief that you don't need your opioid receptors occupied? So most likely what will happen is that there will be some people who will be able to taper off opioids because of cannabis, and there will be a lot of people who are not able to. I think people dealing with chronic pain, it's about managing the pain so that you can live your life and be functional. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst, how would you rate your pain while on opioids? Uh, on a one to 10 scale, I'd probably say three or four on average on the heavy opioids. So what's it like now on CBD? Uh, now it's probably a consistent five, which for me with everything that I'm dealing with from injuries and illness, that for me is manageable. I served active duty in the Navy for four years. I was injured right off the bat. I tripped over the catch wire, carrying roughly 180 pounds worth of tie down chains. So I basically destroyed my left knee and my lower back simultaneously. When were you first prescribed opioids or opiates? In 2000, when I destroyed my knee. And for how long did you take them? 13 years. So I had gone from basically naproxen to tramadol to Vicodin and Oxy. And in the end, I was taking um, morphine tablets. And for me, looking back, my mental state just, it was like I was there, but I wasn't. It was just like a shell of me. Hi, here's Veronica, but she's not present. She's faking it. So when I made an appointment with my primary care physician at the time, she actually recommended that I go out and get a card for medical marijuana and see if that was effective for me. And how high did you feel? Uh, I was pretty out of it for a while. Um, and that was one of the effects that I really didn't like about marijuana. So I talked to some of the um, dispensaries about, you know, what can I do to kind of mitigate this feeling? And they had actually suggested trying pure CBD from the hemp plant. And did you feel relief immediately with the CBD? I didn't really feel relief right away, um, but I felt like after about 30 days of consistently taking it, I started to feel normal again. And how do you feel now, today? Um, I feel alive. You know, I don't, I don't feel like the world is coming down on top of me anymore. And for me, that's big. It's important to remember that there are effective uh, treatments for opioid addiction, and those are things such as methadone, but they're not accessible to all people. So. Um, that's why CBD seems like an appealing option for some other people. It's easier for them to just go to a store, perhaps, and get it and try it.
there is reason to be skeptical about this. No researchers are saying, go out and buy CBD and quit your opioids cold turkey. This is going to be great. There's a lot of trial and error involved in figuring out if this is going to work. My name is Floyd Landis, uh, currently the CEO and founder of a marijuana company, essentially, and uh, we also make products out of hemp. And prior to that, how do people know Floyd Landis? Uh, prior to that, I was a bicycle racer for a period of time. Um, I won the Tour de France in 2006, which was followed by some long drawn out drama. <laughs> in any case, uh, yes, that was my first career in life was as a cyclist. You know, in cycling, it's not that uncommon to just use, you know, Vicodin and things like that for for pain, in, uh, even, even during races, which frankly is not particularly safe. After the 2006 Tour de France, I had my hip replaced because I had had a bad injury. So I was prescribed, you know, Vicodin and Norco to manage it, the, the pain after the surgery. Over a period of a couple years, you know, I just increased the dose. So yeah, it's, it's the kind of thing where it, it doesn't take that long to get addicted to them, but it takes a while to realize what it's actually doing. Initially, I started using marijuana because I thought, okay, this is, people are saying this is great for pain, and I hadn't really ever used marijuana. And, you know, it's fun to get high from time to time, but some people don't function well if they're high, and I can't just stay high all day, <laughs> nor do I want to be. So, um, yeah, over time, we just sort of, you know, figured out that, look, you know, the CBD side of it has just as, as much medicinal benefit as the THC side of it, and I preferred the higher CBD strains. And so, you know, at some point we decided, look, why don't we just try CBD on its own? So take me from the time when you go from sort of user to businessman. It took a little time for me to decide, because of who I am, <laughs> whether I wanted to have my name on it or not. And I just didn't know what the public response would be. I mean, the jokes write themselves, honestly. <laughs> so I was living in Colorado at that time, and marijuana became legal recreationally, and so I just started using it. And that's more or less how I got interested in being in the business. You know, I don't. I don't know. I'm not a great salesman if I'm just selling something for the sake of trying to sell it, but it's something that I cared about and it helped me dramatically and so I thought that it would be a good thing for me to you know, be involved in. In almost every state in this country you can get CBD and every one of those labels says something different and people are taking it because they're desperate. In fact I discourage them from using CBD that's over the counter, but I know that CBD is helpful. If there were an over-the-counter over -the -counter product that we could trust, you know, that we could say, this is how much CBD is in this many milliliters of this oil, and this has been third-party tested, and we know it doesn't have contaminants in it, and it's safe, I would probably feel okay about recommending that. So if we knew that, I would be fine with that, but we don't know that right now. It's important not to have too high of an expectation on this as a, a treatment for your pain and for weaning off of opioids because we really don't know yet if this is gonna be effective for most people. And I talked to the researchers who were you know, looking into this more closely and I asked them, why are you researching this? And they also said, look, we can't say that this is going to work, but we're hopeful that it will and that's why we're studying it. 